Good afternoon, and after a short break, welcome back to Micro Teaching. Today we're focused on the NHS, and we have four questions we're going to try and address today. Have a look. First of those questions is we're going to try and explain why the NHS was established. Secondly, we are going to try and describe the main features of the NHS. Third, we're going to try and explain how resistance to the NHS was overcome. And lastly, we're going to try and explain the significance of the NHS. We're going to try and explain why it was so important. Let's start at the beginning. Before the NHS, the only national system of healthcare was called national insurance. That was only for working people. Each month, from your salary, some of your money would go in taxes to the government. And that meant if you became ill, that money could be used to pay for the health care you needed. The problem with that was it only included working people. It was no good for babies, no good for housewives, and no good for the elderly. In fact, no good at all for anybody who was not in regular employment. The first reason why the NHS was established and they moved on from this system was World War II. And World War II had an impact in three different ways. The first of those was that the government had to involve itself in healthcare during World War II for the public in a way they'd never done before. This was because people were getting injured more, which meant, for example, if someone had uh, injured their leg during the Blitz, somebody was going to have to help to cure that leg for them. Now that got people much more interested and much more used to the idea of the government helping them with their health. Previously, they would have thought it was all their own responsibility. We never expected the government to have really help them with that. Secondly, the returning soldiers. We've got heroes, soldiers who have died and been injured fighting for Britain. When they return, they think, we fought for Britain and now we deserve to be looked after. And part of that is the idea of a better healthcare system. And it's for that reason that they vote in a Labour government. And thirdly, World War II, as you will know from your work on penicillin, has also resulted in the development of new, more advanced drugs. And the population of Britain, who have also helped win this war, feel that they deserve these too. But there's no way they're going to be able to afford these because they're very expensive. All of this leads to a desire for change. Now previously, if you went back 100 years in Britain, that change might have not gone anywhere because it was only richer people who could vote. But now poorer people can too. And if the government wants to get elected, is going to have to respond to their demands. So because of their demands, a man called Beveridge, who is a civil servant, is tasked with the idea of coming up with and planning a national health service. Three ideas underpin Beveridge's vision for the NHS. First of all, the idea of cradle to grave, which means that you will be looked after from the moment you were born to the moment you died. Secondly, all pay, all benefit. This is about tax. The idea that everyone would pay um, a tax from their wages and that that tax would be used to fund what would inevitably be an extremely expensive system. Number three, services free at the point of delivery. This is important. Under the NHS, you would not go to the doctor and be given a bill that would be settled later. The treatment would be free and you would pay nothing. And this was enormously attractive to those people who were poor who didn't have vast amounts of cash lying around their houses. So the NHS manifested itself in this and more. The idea being that if you were pregnant or giving birth to a child, your midwife would be free. If you needed a specialist doctor to treat you, that would be free too. If you needed to visit a hospital, it would be free. The doctors who were trained would be trained by the government. All doctors, general practitioners, would be free. All the drugs you would need would be free. This was also true of dentists and opticians. All of these under the original NHS would be free for everybody. Now this to us, well, to most people, seems like common sense. And it's difficult to understand why there would be resistance to such a humane idea. But there was resistance, and this is why. First of all, we have richer people. I always draw rich people with a top hat and a monocle. And they don't want to pay more taxes because they can already afford their own health care. We also have... Richer people, again the same uh, drawing, arguing that healthcare is a personal responsibility. And they feel that if you give people free healthcare, they will come to expect other things for free too. And it will be a never ending cycle which will cost the country more and more. And thirdly, the doctors themselves. 
they are quite happy with the old system because they would charge people directly. And they are now scared that if they are forced to uh, treat people in the NHS, they will lose all their money. And they will also lose their freedom because it will be the government telling them what to do. Now there is a chance the NHS could never have happened if it wasn't for my, one of my personal heroes, Bevan. Bevan is a very different sort of politician to what Britain has seen before this period. Number one, he's Welsh and not English. Number two, he's an ex-coal miner and knows what it's like to be poor. And for that reason, he is passionate about driving the NHS through. This is how he does it. His solutions I have placed in blue around the three examples of resistance. The first of all, he makes a strong moral argument to this point here, that it would be too expensive. He says the country has to pay for it, no, no matter how expensive it is, because it is morally right to look after people who are sick. Number two, he argues with this point as well. He says that poor health is unlucky. It can happen to anyone. And just because you're poor and get ill doesn't mean that you should suffer more than someone who is rich. So he argues strongly that this old idea that people should pay for their own health care, no matter how rich or poor they are, is wrong. And for the private doctors, he's more practical. He promises them that if they come to work in the NHS, he will match their previous incomes, which means they won't lose money. Now, for those reasons, the NHS is finally implemented. And that means that you should now be able to answer questions one to three up here. Just check you can now. Number one, why was the NHS established? The answer to that are these reasons here, World War II, and then you've also got the contributions of beverage and the contributions of them. Number two, what were the main features of the NHS? For this, you need to be able to describe these things here and also how they are under, underpinned by these concepts here. Three, how is resistance to the NHS overcome? That simply is what Bevan does about these examples of resistance. And number four is going to cause me to get a little bit passionate. Because I don't think anything more important has happened in Britain for the last 100 years. I'm going to tell you a story to illustrate this. My brother was working in another country a few years ago. And he told me a story that I found incredibly sad. It was about a young boy whose grandfather was dying. The young boy came to the local hospital and he begged and he begged, not for health care for his grandfather, but for a mattress on which his grandfather could die. That was because he had no NHS. He had no expectation that anybody should help him in his time of misfortune. The reason we don't like, think like that, the reason we expect to be looked after, is because of the work of people to push this system through, and my heroes, Beveridge and Bevan. If it wasn't for the NHS, our lives would be worse than they are now. Final political message. People fought for the NHS, and you should fight to keep it. Thanks very much for listening. More videos to follow.